Why not? A simple question that has and is changing the world. Why not build a vast science city underground to accommodate three to four thousand scientists and workers? Why not build an earth scraper that reaches down into the earth instead of up? Or an underground park bathed in sunlight and filled with greenery? Or place a wafer fab factory underground where temperatures are constant and vibrations controlled? Why not is a question underground engineers ask routinely and have delivered on with fabulous results. But a growing number of megacities around the world, limited surface space, and an increasingly crowded underground, as well as the pressures of climate change and natural disasters, are demanding a more holistic approach to urban planning. One that requires urban planners and decision makers to embrace the enormous potential of this largely untapped real estate. So here we have a real estate opportunity where instead of offering a property with a nice view, you offer a property with a nice geology. As part of its three-year initiative to explore how the underground can contribute to building more sustainable and resilient cities, the International Tunneling and Underground Space Association's Committee on Underground Space, or ITICUS, invited urban planners to join the discussion at the 2012 World Tunnel Congress in Bangkok, Thailand. We all know about underground space, we build enormous tunnels, but you know we kind of have to convince you as planners to use it. Would you say that's a true statement? I think as planners, we don't think enough about underground space. The Vice President for the International Society of City and Regional Planners, or ISOCOP, admits urban planners largely ignore the underground space. We're not even considering it in our scheme of things, unfortunately. And I say that for many, many planners worldwide, there of course there'll be exceptions. And as we've just heard in all these presentations, there's enormous possibilities. But planners and engineers must go beyond vision. There's a whole lot of planning issues that need to be considered when you're thinking about underground space. Starting with what uses can go underground, at what depths, what are the safeguards, the construction standards and building bylaws, how do you connect public and private spaces underground, the underground also requires new environmental impact assessment models and new mapping methods. As planners, we also talk about um, cadastral information, you know, all kinds of information that go on maps, you know, including ownership, including transfer of properties, registration of properties. How do, how do you think of all of that in 3D? And what about cost? Underground construction is viewed as an expensive proposition. Or is it? We just can't take the initial capital cost as being the differentiator. We have to think about investment and uh, legacy for the future. And that might mean that society has to pay a higher cost now. And there's also the cost of not doing it as well. When including life cycle cost, an independent analysis demonstrated that building an underground wafer fab factory in Switzerland will be 7% more economical over 50 years of operation than a similar factory above ground. As an industry, we have to be to show that underground solutions are far more sustainable and also economical, which is important. The challenges, both real and perceived, of developing the underground require planners and engineers work together to provide solutions. The engineers put forward solid and, and, and durable solutions from a technological point of view. Planners are, are really good at, at wrapping up the overall concept and showing the wider benefits of that. And I think there's a lot to, to gain from each other. As a first step, it was agreed that a joint investigation be conducted of six to eight best practices of cities that are going underground. To understand how they've done it, what they've done, what kind of a perspective they've taken, um, what are the challenges they've faced in this process, so we can educate and convince other cities to come forward and try and take on new projects and new innovations. Convincing government officials or decision makers is another significant challenge. So the question for urban decision makers today is, why not? Why not turn your thinking upside down and instead of building up and out, consider going down instead to create the resilient and sustainable cities of the future. <laughs>